uh, dear colleagues, uh, we are ready to start now. We are uh, very happy to welcome over in our uh, walls on the premises of the Forest and Federal University our dearest colleagues from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Malkov, Ms. Rizvanova. Uh, those two people were among their team of very high pro uh, qualified professionals last year who uh, managed to ensure that uh, Russia's chairmanship in BRICS was extremely successful. And this is not just my judgment. Uh, obviously, I'm biased in this regard. But this is the judgment that comes from, uh, from different countries, from our BRICS partners. And uh, this also could be seen from the results that Russia's chairmanship managed to demonstrate, obviously in uh, close cooperation and with uh, great help from our partners in all the four countries. Uh, while the pandemics did offer a number of uh, limitations, to the last year, and we're still experiencing this uh, this year uh, when the chairmanship passed over to India. I think we learned to live in uh, those conditions, and we also uh, learned to uh, show results. And uh, why BRICS is a successful, uh, not organization, but a successful association because uh, we managed to show that even on a distance, we know each other so well and we are ready to work together that we can overcome anything. Uh, Far Eastern University last year was, I believe, one of uh, important elements of the uh, Russia chairmanship. We had uh, a semester-long internship for BRIC students. We had over 100 uh, young people coming over to FAFU to study uh, in five different uh, master degree uh, and bachelor degree programs. And uh, this was part of the Russia's official calendar of events. And I think uh, the main result was that we uh, had a situation when all those over 100 young people, the brightest people from the five countries, and I see our partners present today uh, online uh, from the universities who uh, had those students coming, uh, they really struck um, long-term friendships and I hope they learned a lot. And now we uh, have a set of uh, friends for Russia, but also in Russia we managed to make a pool of friends for Brazil, India, China, and South Africa. Um, I would not be going into official results because there were a number of uh, things that we accomplished last year, among them counterterrorism strategy, uh, strategy for BRICS economic partnership till 2025, but uh, this would be obviously discussed and uh, uh, told us about by our official representatives. So we're very happy to have Indian colleagues taking very seriously uh, current stage of uh, BRICS endeavor. And uh, today we are to look into how we can uh, offer and see new horizons of BRICS cooperation in a variety of areas and how their uh, Russia's chairmanship results could be fed best into today, this year but also beyond. Uh, with that said, uh, before offering the keynote speech to our uh, Moscow guests, uh, I'm very happy to welcome here uh, Dr. Alexei Starichka, who is the head of the Agency for International Cooperation of the Primorsky Territory, to give his welcoming speech uh, for this event. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Panova, 
it's a great pleasure and great honor for me to welcome all of you, especially your Excellencies representative for Foreign Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Malkov and Mr. Ms. Rizvanova, dear participant of conference, Russian and foreign colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Primorsky government, I am honored to greet you on this plenary session dedicated to analysis of former Russia's chairmanship and forthcoming India's chairmanship in BRICS, as well as India's agenda itself. Historically, Russia and India maintained friendly relations of uh, strategic partnership. 2018 was the year of 70th anniversary of our bilateral diplomatic relations. Primorsky territory tends to make its own contribution into further development of this cooperation in all possible spheres. In 1992, General Consulate of India in Vladivostok was established and uh, it commemorates its 25th anniversary in year 2017. Uh, despite comparatively small trade to Nova between Primorsky territory and India, I would like to state the positive trend that we see lately. Share of India in Primorsky territory international trade historically, unfortunately, does not exceed 1%. Nevertheless, if we analyze trends, in year 2020, Primorsky territory trade turnover with India has grown by 6.5% in comparison to the previous year, though it was pandemic year, and uh, reached almost 50 million US dollars. Not a huge figure, but anyway, we analyze the trends right now. In the structure of international commodities turnover, India took 10th place among more than 100 countries that our region had trade with in year 2020. For quite a long period of time, such Indian companies like J. Rus, East Farm, which is an affiliate of Pharma Synthes Company, Indigo Nest and other work in Primorsky territory very successfully. As, a, as of much 2021, actual Indian investment in two projects being developed in Primorsky territory under frameworks of Freeport Vladivostok or priority development areas made up a sum of more than 1 billion rubles. Uh, as a, as, a, as a, uh, of March, there are three companies with investment from India which are residents of Freeport Vladivostok and Primorsky area. One of the most vivid examples of Indian investment into the region was opening of diamond polishing company KJK Rus in 2017 in Vladivostok. Opening of this factory was made personally by President of Russian Federation, Mr. Vladimir Putin, during the third economic, Eastern Economic Forum. And the amount of investment for this project is uh, more than half of trillion Russian rubles. It's a great pleasure for me to underline that almost 300 jobs was created here in Vladivostok and Primorsky Krai. Another diamond polishing project is being developed since year 2018 by M. Suresh Vladivostok. It's the name of the company, which also obtained uh, free Port Vladivostok resident status. Amount of investment for this project is above 300 million rubles and over 200 jobs created. A new training curriculum was launched with the support of Primorsky Territory Government on the facilities of Primorsky Territory Industrial College for Energy and Telecommunication and several dozens of students has already passed this curriculum and became the diamond polishers and obtained the working places with the companies which were established by the Indian enterprises. Now also, Russian Far East, including Primorsky territory, actively attracts Indian investment. We are ready, believe, to render all the necessary assistance in development of projects within framework of Freeport Vladivostok and priority development areas to Indian company and we surely invite Indian partners to review the possibilities of opening new 
high-tech enterprises in agriculture, timber processing, food processing, pharmacy, consumer good industry, machinery, manufacturing of building materials, processing of raw materials. Also, in September uh, 2019, Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Sri Narendra Modi, participated in fifth economic, Eastern Economic Forum as a key speaker. And me personally, uh, I had a great chance for me to welcome him, his, him in the airport, and it's one of the most, most vivid memories of my whole life, to say the truth. We, uh, where he announced unprecedented one billion US dollar credit line assigned by Indian government to invest into development of Russian Far East regions, which I'm sure will serve the further broadening of our bilateral cooperation. Since August 1st, year 2017, India citizens may enjoy simplified visa regime to arrive to Freeport Vladivostok via electronic visa. Unfortunately, now temporarily it is suspended due to COVID-19, but uh, we see now even here in Far Eastern Federal University, we see the loosening of the COVID restrictions. Hope very soon we will be able to travel to India and uh, from Russia to India, from India to Russia without any restrictions. For the aim of development, developing tourist cooperation, we are interested in opening direct air flights between Primorsky territory and Indian states. Uh, I cannot help mentioning people-to-people -people ties. And many of Primorsky locals are fascinated by India and are interested in Indian culture and respect India traditions and history. Oh, almost for over than 25 years, Far Eastern Federal University, which is a venue for our discussion today, uh, has an academic chair for Indian studies, and thus FEFU nurtured a lot of specialists in Indian studies. Right now, over 200 Indian students are studying in FEFU, and we appreciate the assistance of Indian government for annual uh, scholarships being granted to Far Eastern University for development of Indian studies. This support allowed us to activate the work of Federal University India Cultural Center and increase in role its interest in Indian studies. This is a very effective practice and we cherish it. Uh, Russia-India country-to-country business dialogue was added to uh, Eastern Economic Forum agenda in year 2017, and under this model, business community representatives discuss practical possibilities for development of bilateral projects on Russian Far East. This is the unique possibility to showcase one achievements, one's achievements and find reliable partners for further cooperation. We hope for, for active attitude of Indian businesses and support on highest level. And uh, I would like to wish a fruitful discussion and achievement of design goals to all the participants of our conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much for your speech. I should tell you that uh, even despite the pandemics, we managed to have a really uh, for productive uh, entrance campaign this year. Mm. And I can tell you we have over 350 Indian students. So not just two. Already. So it's uh, even, even better. And uh, I'm seeing this figure uh, increasing with every year, and uh, they are more than just uh, medical or engineering sciences that we're seeing Indian students gaining their interest in. So it's um, uh, truly uh, a really prospective, um, um, prospective relations that we can strike uh, with the help of uh, FAFU, uh, both for short-term programs with our partners who are partly here, uh, present with us even online and with uh, uh, assisting developing of the Russia-India relations uh, with the academic um, ties that we are having. Uh, now allow me to uh, give the floor.
to Mr. Evgeny Valasastov, who is the deputy head of the representative office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia in Vladivostok. Evgeny, the floor is yours. Uh, dear colleagues, I'm very, great, very uh, glad to stay here. Uh, I guess uh, this is uh, almost a year, a year past since I was here. I visited Devafu personally. And I hope that finally uh, this situation with pandemic will be over and we all uh, gradually return to our uh, usual uh, mode of life. Well, if speaking about uh, the Far Eastern State University, we all know that this is a great think tank and this is a great analytical center for uh, Northeast Asia researchers, but it was great pleasure for me to get to know. I was surprised that this uh, highly um, specialized and uh, highly interesting uh, topics like India and like BRICS are also discussed here and uh, they are also very interesting even for Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, so uh, I would be brief just now. I want to be brief just now because Mr. Starichkov already gave uh, to us uh, all around description of our uh, cooperation with India, of primary territory cooperation with India. So um, I just want to underline uh, that uh, we already have a lot of very interesting projects uh, just put in practice here in primary territory and also there are a lot of uh, very interesting projects that should be realized and uh, they are um, very variable just uh, starting from the uh, much spoken uh, labor imports from India and uh, mining uh, projects here in uh, not just in primary territory but in the whole Far East and uh, finishing with the uh, highly technological enterprises can be opened here. And all these questions are discussed uh, according to the quite understandable reasons. All these uh, discussions were suspended through the 2020, but I hope that it's just rather good uh, time to start. So I want to uh, once again uh, welcome uh, all uh, the people, all the colleagues present in here, and uh, want to wish to all of us uh, great discussions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and now we are moving on to a, a key part of our uh, event, and I uh, would like now to give the floor to our uh, Moscow guests. Uh, so now, uh, Mr. Mikhail Malkov, who is the head of the BRICS Office of the Foreign Policy Planning Department of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, will tell us about results of the Russia's chairmanship and expectations uh, Russia has of, the, of this year and probably um, of the longer term perspective for BRICS. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, colleagues. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here and uh, uh, I would like to welcome all the participants of uh, this plenary. Uh, first and foremost, my thanks, special thanks go to Ms. Panova, uh, Dr. Panova, for organizing this event. And actually, I should uh, admit that uh, uh, Dr. Panova contributed a lot uh, to the uh, successful um, uh, chairship of uh, Russian BRICS uh, uh, in her capacity of the head of uh, the uh, BRICS Expert Council, uh, which um, uh, was responsible for uh, organizing a lot of people-to-people uh, -people events uh, during the Russian chairship. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Panova noted that uh, we have learned uh, to live and work in new realities, uh, which means more use of virtual uh, formats in our uh, cooperation, in our dialogue. Uh, however, uh, I would uh, share the sentiments expressed by my colleague, uh, Mr. Volosastov uh, from the uh, MFA representative office in Vladivostok um, that, uh, such online <coughs> that such online 
communication cannot replace uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, meetings. And uh, we're looking forward uh, uh, to Indian chairship to uh, restore the normal communication and breaks. And we're looking forward to uh, being hosted by our Indian colleagues in uh, this beautiful country, and definitely uh, it will uh, how it will help us uh, to uh, further develop uh, the dialogue between uh, the big five, as we call it. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, before I start to deliver my uh, remarks uh, on the topic of uh, today's panel session, uh, let me uh, share some thoughts on BRICS itself. Uh, for more than a decade, uh, our group, um, having um, in the United uh, Five uh, distinctive uh, civilizations has been uh, proving its efficiency, the ability to uh, keep pace uh, with the times, evolve, uh, evolve um, along with the changing and emerging new challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic has become an additional factor uh, of fragmentation and anxiety in the international relations. Um, a global crash test, if you want, uh, not only for the health systems, but uh, for the world economy and finances, trade and industry, uh, people to people uh, exchanges as well. Uh, nevertheless, the crisis has apparently shown the need to work together on developing joint responses uh, to common challenges and counter real but not uh, contrived threats. <coughs> BRICS countries immediately responded to a new challenge, becoming a, uh, so to say, 3 a.m. friend uh, for each other. Uh, the governments uh, of BRICS countries in close cooperation with mutual foreign and national de um, uh, development community have uh, reacted proactively and pledged unprecedented fiscal and monetary stimulus uh, packages to respond uh, uh, to adversity and challenges caused by COVID-19 outbreak. The new development bank established um, an uh, emergency assistance facility to meet the needs of uh, its member countries, providing emergency loans that could be used uh, to finance direct expenses related uh, to the fight against the uh, COVID-19 outbreak or provide uh, support to governmental measures contributing to economic recovery in member countries. Up till today, uh, seven billion dollars have been um, disbursed so far. And in total, NDB allocated um, about $10 billion to finance uh, loans under, the pro under this uh, program. As you can see, a united voice of BRICS countries has sounded confidently on the international scene. Uh, consistently defending our common principles. By synergizing the political and economic potential of the five countries, we create preconditions for our grouping to play a crucial positive role uh, in uh, international affairs as well as improve global go governance um, even under the current circumstances of, uh, pan of the pandemic. Uh, B5 uh, format uh, contributes to overcoming the vestige of uh, confrontational bloc approaches emerging from arrogant disregard of the legitimate interests of other states, attempts to replace the international law um, <clears throat> with uh, uh, tough and dishonest game with no rules, uh, with an abundance of um, uh, double standards emasculated with the uh, rules-based order concept. Uh, I'm convinced that under the wise guidance of our Indian friends this year and uh, with the support of all partners, BRICS will be able to contribute to the implementation of uh, the task to make uh, this world better. 
Uh, coming back to the topic of uh, today's plenary session, uh, let me uh, start by congratulating our Indian colleagues uh, on this human BRICS chairship in 2021. Uh, the motto of the Indian chairship uh, is BRICS uh, at 15, uh, intra BRICS cooperation for continuity, consolidation, and consensus. And we fully subscribe ourselves um, on these tasks. Uh, and uh, uh, with these priorities in mind, uh, we have uh, full confidence that India, standing on the captain's bridge uh, of the B-5 vessel, uh, will contribute to the further development of our pentilateral cooperation in all three pillars of BRICS strategic partnership, which are the policy and security, economy and finance, culture, and the humanitarian exchanges, people-to-people -people exchanges. We are pleased to provide very po every possible assistance and support in this regard. We highly value uh, this substantive and keen approach of our Indian colleagues to strengthen our cooperation on the basis of uh, the principle of continuity and implementation of the BRICS summit's decisions. Uh, and uh, we fully share the priorities outlined by the Indian chairship, which are reform of the multilateral system, countering uh, terrorism, uh, countering terrorism, um, using digital and technological solutions for the achievement of SDGs and enhancing people-to-people -people exchanges. We welcome the initiative of our Indian uh, friends to adopt a joint uh, statement on the reform of uh, the uh, multilateral system. We proceed from the fact that BRICS as a group has something to say in this regard, uh, with the proper focus and emphasis, of course. Uh, the UN, WTO, WHO, and other international fora and mechanisms are crucial in aligning the interests of the sovereign states and developing collective responses to common challenges. We have been united in our approaches um, to, the, to this issue. The Moscow Declaration of the 12th uh, BRICS Summit notes uh, uh, that our uh, leaders unanimously spoke in favor of strengthening cooperation among our countries in international fora, as well as a reform and strengthening of the <coughs> multilateral system. Uh, BRICS can and must play an important role in building a new, more just and representative world order. In future, the B5 can become one of the pillars of the renewed global architecture of multilateral cooperation. In this regard, uh, particular attention should be paid to strengthening ties of our grouping with developing countries and their integration mechanisms. The expansion of the circle of external BRICS partnerships, primarily through the BRICS Plus and Outreach Dialogue, is a testament to, uh, to openness and willingness to share the benefits of collective work uh, with others on a voluntary and mutually beneficial basis. We consider it important to further develop this format, but uh, once again I should stress that uh, it's not about the expansion of BRICS itself. It's about strengthening of its uh, cooperation with the uh, developing world uh, for first and foremost. We support further consolidation of BRICS efforts in countering the threat of international terrorism. The social and economic consequences of the COVID-19 crisis around the world increase the risk of radicalization, create additional opportunities for terrorist organizations to recruit new followers, carry out uh, attacks and uh, propaganda or disinformation campaigns. Uh, internet resources, social networks, and instant messages uh, are increasingly being uh, used for this purpose. The terrorist international had, was uh, not willing to lay down arms while preparing for new attacks, even in the face of a widespread lockdown. In this context, further development of the BRICS cooperation on this issue requires concrete steps. We have managed to do a lot uh, during uh, the last year um, uh, while uh, the Russia uh, was assuming uh, the functions of um, the BRICS chair. Uh, and um, we managed to adopt um, the BRICS counterterrorism strategy, uh, which uh, was uh, approved by our leaders um, 
at the BRIC summit on 18th of November, 17th of November. All BRICS countries are involved in cooperation within the framework of the International Counterterrorism Database uh, set uh, and launched uh, by uh, the Federal Security Service of Russia. We look forward to strengthening interaction in this format. The meetings of subgroups of expert practitioners of the BRICS Counterterrorism Working Group were held uh, for the first time, unfortunately in a, in a virtual format and uh, it uh, didn't allow uh, to, um, <clears throat> to exchange our views on uh, different parts of uh, our anti-terrorist cooperation, counter-terrorist cooperation, but uh, nevertheless we are looking forward to having a face-to-face -face meeting of uh, the uh, CTWG and uh, its uh, working groups uh, uh, under the Indian chairship uh, this year. We believe that the BRICS counterterrorism action plan proposed by Indian uh, chairship uh, will be a follow-up uh, to the adopted counterterrorism strategy and uh, will enhance our collective efforts in the noble goal of eradicating uh, the terrorist threat. Uh, the valuable deliverable of the Russian year in BRICS uh, on the economic track was uh, uh, adoption of the strategy for BRICS Economic Partnership 2025, uh, which defines mid-term priorities of pentilateral cooperation in the area of trade, investment, digital agenda, and sustainable development. We consider this document as a roadmap for the economic recovery of our countries for the post-COVID period uh, to ensure the improvement of the well-being of our citizens and soonest getting back on the track of sustainable growth. In this regard, we take note uh, of and uh, ready to work on the implementation, on the adoption of the uh, Indian um, Initiative on Preparing Strategy for uh, BRICS Economic Partnership Action Plan. Uh, we uh, also acknowledge the progress achieved by BRICS countries in the past years when the first uh, uh, strategy for BRICS Economic Partnership um, uh, was um, uh, being implemented. Uh, actually, it was also um, adopted uh, by our leaders in 2015 in Ufa, uh, the Ufa BRICS Summit. And uh, uh, for the past uh, five years, um, uh, we uh, note with satisfaction uh, the increase in uh, trade ex exchanges uh, between uh, our uh, grouping uh, between uh, countries um, uh, of BRICS um, and this increase is 45% uh, uh, so we are uh, looking forward uh, to uh, having more progress in intra-BRICS uh, trade uh, under the uh, Indian chairship. Um, also, I would uh, like to know the Russian initiative um, on uh, transport. Uh, uh, we, for, we had um, uh, the first meeting of uh, transport agencies under the Russian chairship in November, uh, and um, it uh, proves uh, the need to uh, further strengthen uh, cooperation in this field of transport. Uh, actually, uh, it's not the work of today. This work has been launched, uh, was launched by the uh, Brazilian chairship by uh, signing the MOU on uh, cooperation in the regional aviation. So then the meeting of transport authorities uh, uh, followed under the um, uh, Russian uh, BRICS chairship. And we're looking forward uh, to our Indian friends to uh, host uh, the meeting of um, uh, transport ministers as it was agreed during the last meeting of transport authorities. Uh, I also would like to note uh, the uh, cooperation uh, in B2B uh, exchanges. Uh, last year we launched uh, the uh, 
Women Business Alliance, uh, which we help um, will serve as a uh, good uh, platform for exchanges of best practices uh, between our countries in uh, promoting uh, women entrepreneurship, uh, women uh, engagement uh, in uh, econom uh, in economy of our countries, which, which could contribute to the uh, returning. Uh, coming back on track of uh, the sustainable uh, growth in our countries uh, in the post-COVID period. Uh, we also uh, note that the development of humanitarian aspect of cooperation and ties between people contributes to the enhancement of the pentilateral dialogue. We still have many opportunities for joint work in this um, domain. We fully support the initiative uh, to by an uh, Indian chairship to uh, continue good tradition of hosting BRICS games in India this year, if the situation, of course, permits. Last year, the first meeting of BRICS sports ministers concluded with the adoption of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in the, fields, uh, in the field of uh, physical culture and sport, another issue to continue working on. The format could become a platform for sharing the experience of supporting and developing sports in the five countries, as well as for coordinating positions on topical issues of the Olympic and Paralympic movements. The meeting of uh, BRICS tourism ministers uh, started uh, the process of negotiations on the BRICS Memorandum of Understanding or Cooperation in the field of tourism, as well as the establishment of the BRICS Working Group on Tourism. Actually, this initiative was firstly pronounced by the South African Chairship in 2018, and we uh, tried to um, bring this initiative forward and we are looking forward to our Indian friends to continue this work as well. We consider it important to strengthen parliamentary, youth, academic and expert communi uh, communities cooperation among BRICS cities and municipalities, gradually developing BRICS network universities. It is important to jointly keep the rapid pace of BRICS cooperation aimed at practical outcomes for our people. As our leaders stated during the 12th BRICS Summit, the common intention of our joint work is to further deepen BRICS strategic partnership and work together on a wide range of issues to help improve the standards and quality of life of our peoples. While implementing these instructions of our leaders, we are sure that under the wise leadership of our Indian friends, as well as with the support of all part partners, the year of Indian BRICS will be held uh, on a high note and will contribute to the further development of the group in the spirit of continuity, consolidation and consensus. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have a number of comments and questions, but I think I will uh, withhold them for a while. Besides, I know I should not be uh, occupying the floor totally because um, I already heard that there are a number of uh, questions coming from the audience both here and also that is present here online. Uh, and um, one thing to... Uh, mentioned that you, you talked about transport ministers meeting and from what I know that we're already starting to have uh, practical results uh, finally we've been as expert or academic community lamenting about the need for better type better logistical ties between the five countries for I don't know how many I think from the very start it's been coming out as uh, part of recommendations part of our uh, uh, request to the officials in from what I understand we uh, had uh, the new route opened finally last year it's been postponed because of the pandemics it's regular um, basis between Russia and South Africa and because uh, 
it's it's actually a shame that in order to reach our partner from the BRICS, we have to go via some third countries that have different policies and that could be closed, it could be political reasons, not just economic, and uh, we need to have a, a direct path of communication. So it's um, uh, one of very good examples uh, that I see. But before actually proceeding to comments from the audience and questions from the audience and my, my own questions and comments, uh, I would like now to give the floor to Mr. Akshay Mathur, who is director of the Observer Search Foundation in Mumbai. Uh, I should say that ORF has been our partner uh, on the in the BTTC, is the track two. Uh, this has been institutionalized by the decision of the leaders yet in Durban in 2013. Since then, we've been a very, uh, not became just very good friends with ORF, uh, but also I think we've been very efficient in uh, uh, offering new dimensions and new visions for the BRICS. And one of the uh, recent results were the recommendations that, that were reached as, at the end of the academic forum, uh, Moscow Academic Forum. And Mr. Akshay Mathur was uh, one of the most um, enthusiastic and uh, productive and um, uh, I think best contributors. So I enjoyed working with Mr. Mathur probably most. Uh, during that process, and I think we've came out with a number of very good results, including the indicator system that would allow us, academic community of the BRICS, as opposed to some Western countries or outside observers, to be monitoring progress within BRICS and to kind of uh, be nagging our leaders and our Sherpas and our foreign ministers and other ministries and responsible officials for uh, actually delivering on what they promised over the, in uh, previous years. So I think it's uh, one of the most important achievements of the previous year on our track. Mr. Mathur, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Victoria Panova. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, uh, I, I recognize that uh, this is about India's chairmanship, and uh, we've had a. I'm happy to represent the Observer Research Foundation at this uh, meeting. Uh, I, um, uh, I I'm very uh, thankful for the uh, remarks that came before me on explaining what some of the statistics were of Indian students and Indian business working in uh, Vladivostok and the extended region. Our only, our only challenge uh, uh, with uh, you, Victoria, is that you set very, very high standards. And so it is not possible for us to always meet, but we will try and we will try and um, we will try and meet some of those standards in 2021, uh, working with you. I, uh, I, I suppose I will just, I'll make two points, which uh, I hope will be helpful uh, to your audience. Uh, uh, one one point on in, uh, on introduction and then two points on the content. Uh, I suppose uh, everybody should just uh, recognize, I'd just like to underline that uh, for India, we're considering this as the 15th year, the 15th anniversary of the first meeting of the BRICS that took place uh, in 2006, even though it was an informal meeting along the lines of the UNGA. Uh, so in some ways, uh, we think it's appropriate that, uh, that some kind of stock taking will take place. The officials from uh, the Russian foreign ministry and Russian government have already, uh, uh, have already uh, reiterated that the theme for this year is continuity, consolidation, and consensus. So while I don't speak for the government, uh, as you know, I'm representing the think tank, but yet, yes, the officially designated think tank for the BRICS process, uh, I'll make two points, one on the official process of BRICS this year and one on the academic forum process. On the official process, you might have already seen that there are three categories in which the Indian government will be working on. Politics and security is the first one, economic and financial is the second one, and P2P is the third one. So in some ways, these are very obvious categories, but I think this is a useful reminder that 
the P2P process uh, has been, uh, is considered one of the three main legs of, uh, the, of the BRICS priorities for 2021. Under uh, politics and security, you will see some of the initiatives that were mentioned before, but I think one that is particularly important would be the counterterrorism cooperation. The, uh, uh, the uh, senior leader from the Russian government has already highlighted the, the, uh, the counterterrorism database and the counterterrorism working group uh, and the work that has been undertaken under that. So there is some work there. Uh, that will take place under the politics and security umbrella. The second one is economic and financial. It's closer to my area of study personally. And um, uh, you can see from the calendar that a, a few meetings have already taken place, like the BRICS payments task force meeting. You know, the contingency reserve arrangement is already doing its test run. The bond fund is already being worked on again and the work has already started, is work on digital financial inclusion and others. So I think the, uh, I know that the, the economic strategy was uh, published last year, which I think is, is going to be fundamental to some of the work the government does, as well as some of the work we do in, under the academic and the think tank process uh, going forward, including business, by the way, it's not just uh, the academic process. The third bucket is, uh, is P2P. And uh, I'll just come back to P2P uh, in a minute, but I, I think in P2P, it's important to recognize that it's not just the academic forum or the business, but it's also the Women's Business Alliance, which of course the Russian presidency has really uh, has, has launched and energized. And uh, so uh, I hope that more work will take this this year. Uh, one, one remark on the BRICS financial track, I think the finance track uh, process is the work typically is away from the public eye, a little less so than the work that takes place on other tracks. But there is work taking place on fintech uh, and on um, the uh, on, on infrastructure financing, particularly social infrastructure financing. And uh, and I think there is uh, there's there's going to be a lot more discussion on NDB. Uh, and the uh, and the new centers that we plan to open in Russia or in India. So uh, that's in terms of what uh, the government's priorities are. In the academic forum, where our role is to is to align ourselves and facilitate and and uh, enrich and embellish uh, the government's priorities, but it is also to uh, to be a little bit more expansive and take into consideration things that the government may or may not be discussing because this is an independent process. Here, for this year, we've highlighted four priorities uh, under the academic forum process. Uh, one is on reform multilateralism, uh, which the Indian government has highlighted as its own priority. We will be looking at how multilateralism itself can be rejuvenated, reconfigured, reviewed, and re-energized. The second one is on digitalization. And uh, across the board, you will see that even in the government process, you will see work being done on digital health, digital agriculture. And so even in the academic forum, we want to see what we can do under digitalization and how that can be a source of uh, uh, economic recovery as well as jobs as we move into 2022. The third one is the climate change. Uh, my own understanding is, uh, again, I'm not a government official, but my own understanding is that, uh, of course, climate is an important priority area for BRICS as a whole and for the individual countries. For now, it seems that the BRICS uh, is going to contribute to the COP process uh, going to be taking place this year. And so I think the discussions at the, in, the, in the United Nations process is going to be, will take primacy. Uh, while uh, the discussions uh, under the BRICS process is going to be supportive of the global discussions that are taking place. Uh, this is in terms of the priorities. And the fourth one is on security. And I think uh, we mentioned counterterrorism, but there is a lot of work that we can do on money laundering and terrorism financing. The database is really important, but we need uh, to join our efforts on FATF and some of the other work that is taking place. Again, this is the academic forum part. So, I think the literature and research on the academic forum part is something that we want to build out as we go forward. There is a calendar of events. 
uh, that we will do under the BRICS academic forum process. Uh, there are there are close to eight, uh, seven or eight events that we will do. Of course, we're launching the academic forum process in April on the sidelines of the Rizina dialogue. Uh, but we are going to host events on different subjects, uh, depending on the papers that we will write. There will be a dialogue on reform multilateralism, a dialogue on global health, on SDGs, uh, on, uh, on, on a women-led framework for growth, on international security, on digitalization. We are also going to do the BRICS Economic Forum, uh, which we hopefully with some uh, with a little bit more emphasis on uh, the issues of the finance track that I mentioned before. Uh, and of course, that will culminate into the BRICS Academic Forum. So uh, I think I will, uh, that's in terms of the BRICS uh, process from the government as well as from the Academic Forum. I will end with uh, my view on the, on the BRICS chairmanship for uh, by India in 2021. We, of course, in India are seeing uh, I think the word, I think the, the, the theme con continuity, consolidation and consensus, I really believe, in, you know, uh, I mean, I'm speaking from the sidelines as, as, a, as an expert, not a government official, but it's, it's a really thoughtful and thought through theme. There is a work that is happening on how to continue on issues where we have been successful, where we can consolidate the agenda. And, uh, and in, within India, we keep underlining uh, the basic principle that BRICS is a consensus-based organization. And I think that's a really important uh, principle for us internally to follow as we deal with other multilateral institutions as well. Secondly, we do see, we are paying a little bit more attention on how BRICS can and what it can do. Personally, I feel like we need to pay a little bit more attention on what we can do in other forums where we're at, not just the climate change forum in the United Nations, but also G20. Uh, the WTO. I think uh, this has been an ongoing issue since the inception of BRICS. But the inception of BRICS and the and the inception of G20 at the leaders level have were more or less aligned. And I think it's always been uh, are in. It's always there has always been some good intentions of, to see how we can align the agenda and work together in the larger multilateral organizations. And I think this will be a good opportunity because we certainly have the chair this year. But uh, even as we go into G20, I think it'll be important to see what are the issues that we can drive and what are some of the synergies that we can pick up. And uh, uh, lastly, in terms of uh, the, uh, the network, while uh, the outreach is something that the governments will work on, the outreach between, uh, between, uh, between the BRICS think tanks, I think has grown and worked really, really well. We have seen and we really value that the Russian presidency last year included and many think tanks from all the five countries besides the BTTC members. And they made an extra effort to not only host meetings, but have a very, very wide calendar. We're trying to do something similar. We want more voices, even from our own countries to be at the table. And I think that is something that we will continue to work on. So. Uh, I'm cognizant of time, so Dr. Panova, I'll stop here. Happy to come back and answer some questions. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person uh, this April. I'm hoping it works because I'm planning to be both on Rezina and uh, the first BTTC. And I also know that uh, you, together with uh, RIS, are responsible for launching another uh, outreach, which is, uh, as you term it, a civil society cooperation with uh, British officials. So, and it will be a curtain raising event. So, we're hoping to be uh, integral parts of um, uh, all those with our uh, Indian partners. Um, I think. Uh, as I said, I will be uh, keeping my uh, probably questions and comments for later today. Just one thing I want to demonstrate to everybody was is the, are the results of our joint work last year. They are in in paper, also on internet. Uh, Mr. Malkoff have um, talked uh, largely about a strategy for economic partnership till 2025. 
uh, it's not the first time. Uh, we had the previous one adopted during the previous Russia's chairmanship. It's uh, been the strategy for economic partnership 2015-2020. And this is uh, the result of expert council work, BRICS expert council, together with our BTTC partners. And uh, this tells us about what BRICS managed to achieve over the five years uh, and how this um, cooperation between us managed to help us uh, go through actually be among the countries that are overcoming the economic crisis due to pandemic better than anybody than other countries so i think this is part of uh, uh, what what uh, managed what, what helped us to be successful or let's say uh, go through uh, the crisis situation uh, l relatively better and we are hoping to continue this work uh, and another one is the toolkit for uh, women economic empowerment. Uh, Mr. Malkoff also managed uh, Women Business Alliance that was launched last year. And uh, Mr. Akshay uh, mentioned that people to people and also uh, the role of women will be on the agenda for India's chairship as well. And uh, this is also something from which we can be uh, going forward. It's also done uh, together uh, with the BTTC uh, and also with the support of the Ministry of Economic Development of the Russian Federation. And this is their... Um, gathering of best practices of what all the BRICS countries have done so far in order to promote uh, women. So this is um, one of the uh, important products of their expert track of the people-to-people -people contacts that we had last year, and I'm sure we'll be doing uh, this both at Academic Forum at the BTTC meetings uh, of this year and further on. Um, I know there are questions. And uh, I will be, I would not be biased, but we'll, we have them also from the screen, I, uh, I guess. But there are some uh, questions that could be uh, forwarded not only to Mr. Uh, um, Malkoff and Mr. Mathur, but I hope uh, also to hear maybe some views on their influence of BRICS on the regional uh, development for the forest from Mr. Starichkov and Mr. Velasostov. Uh, so if they will be willing to answer questions, uh, this will be also a welcome step. So uh, if who, who would be willing to start? Uh, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, your comments. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. My name is uh, Evgeny Vlasov. I am Deputy Vice President for International Relations. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all our distinguished speakers of this plenary session and our guests. And uh, it's not uh, uh, a question, but uh, a small comment, uh, maybe, um, of our uh, results of uh, education in educational sphere. Uh, last year, uh, during Russia's presidency, uh, our university, Faisen Federal University, uh, has conducted a really interesting project. It was uh, BRICS uh, academic uh, internship program, uh, which was supported by Dr. Panova and by our president, uh, Dr. Anisimov. Uh, we gathered students from uh, five uh, countries, from Brazil, China, Russia, India, and uh, South Africa. And we gathered all of them here on the campus of Ruski Island. Uh, they lived uh, here and uh, uh, were part of our uh, academic uh, exchange program. Um, and I want to proudly share one of our results, which is really significant personally to me, is that we have established a lot of uh, joint uh, uh, research ties between our young scholars among Brazil, China, India, Russia, and South Africa. And uh, a lot of uh, papers, uh, uh, the research, uh, we have published already. And uh, one of my expectations to India's presidency, to India's chairmanship, that they can go on with such educational initiatives and they can maybe continue our project or maybe add some their uh, of their own ideas. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Lukin, probably. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Panova. <coughs> I am Artyom Lukin, uh, Deputy Director for Research at the Oriental Institute here at Tarzan Federal University. And thank you, uh, Mr. Malkov, for, for your presentation. And uh, actually, my question uh, goes to you and maybe to, uh, to, to the other key speakers. Uh, and so I actually have two questions. Uh, my first question regards the BRICS response to the COVID pandemic. Uh, you obviously mentioned that BRICS uh, did something, but uh, frankly, may maybe I'm wrong, and so you, you could, maybe you will dispel my doubts, but frankly, I, I was not very much impressed by, by the BRICS response to the pandemic. So apart from some you know, rhetorical statements, I personally saw nothing of substance. So you mentioned some uh, emergency financial facility, but did it actually work? Uh, were, was real money disbursed through this facility? Uh, and was there some you know, joint research on vaccines and, and other stuff? So maybe uh, I know too little about that. Uh, so my impression was that the BRICS countries were all for themselves in this situation. Uh, so China had its own vaccine diplomacy, Russia had its own vaccine diplomacy, and so forth and so on. And uh, my second question regards the relationship between uh, the BRICS and the Quad. As you, as you spoke, it, it actually you know, occurred to me that the language of the BRICS and the language, language of the Quad, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, the, uh, the, their languages are kind of similar, you know, providing you know, vaccine relief, you know, climate, fighting climate change, supporting economic development. Uh, so, uh, frankly, I think that we're going to see some kind of competition developing between the BRICS and the Quad, and uh, a very large part of this competition will be definitely about India. <laughs> Uh, because India is obviously uh, the power which is both, uh, which is member of both the Quad and the BRICS. So, uh, to, 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 to sum up, how do you see the relationship between the BRICS and the Quad? So, is it one of mutual, you know, of mutually ignoring each other, which seems to be the case right now, or is it uh, the, the relationship of competition, uh, which? which is most likely to be the case, or is it one of potential collaboration? If it is, what kind of collaboration could it be between the Quad and the BRICS? Because I think, uh, well, the BRICS uh, is, is here. The BRICS is a very strong institution. It's, re it's actually developing. Uh, the Quad, we, we had some doubts about the Quad just recently, but the Quad is materializing just before our eyes. It's, now it's real. They had the summit just recently. So I think the quote is here and it's not going away. So we have to find some kind of, you know, uh, uh, relationship with it. So that's, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I think we'll get a couple more questions and then you'll be able to respond. Uh, Dr. Gustavoit, I know you wanted to ask something. Yes, thank you. My name is Evgeny Bustavoit. I'm a Dean of Oriental Studies Institute of Far uh, for Eastern Federal University. I have only two short questions. Uh, how do you think, how can you describe Russians' interest in India's priorities nowadays? And how do you think uh, how, international how Russia's international role can transform during uh, uh, Russia interests, Russian, uh, our BRICS international international cooperations during the Indian's presidency. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll now uh, offer floor to for responses, and then uh, we'll have a second uh, round of questions. Uh, yeah, uh, it's actually very flattering uh, to be uh, the single speaker uh, to be addressed. 
<laughs> so, uh, but uh, I will start uh, with the equations um, on COVID-19 and the BRICS response uh, to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, first, I, you've mentioned already uh, the uh, program launched by the NDB uh, to um, assist uh, the BRICS countries to overcome uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, related economic crisis. Uh, you have said that uh, you haven't heard about uh, dispersing of money. So, <laughs> I will tell you, seven billion dollars were disbursed uh, to BRICS countries uh, on different projects. Uh, actually, um, as far as I know, one billion dollar went to India. Uh, to, to China uh, and uh, Brazil and uh, one uh, billion went to, uh, no, two already went to South Africa. Uh, as for Russia, <clears throat> we are still thinking about um, about the possibility to engage with the NDB to um, loan uh, um, to get loans uh, from the NDB for the economic recovery, but uh, actually, uh, you know that uh, when you take loans, uh, you should uh, pay back. So definitely, it's a, <clears throat> uh, different, it's a different story and very difficult one. And uh, here, I should say, uh, you should think twice. But. Um, uh, as for now, I believe that the Russian Federation manages to, um, to uh, limit the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the government already allocated uh, uh, financial resources for economic recovery as well. So if there is a need uh, in um, uh, some finances uh, to uh, be allocated uh, to finance the uh, Russian projects uh, with regard to the um, uh, countering um, the uh, negative effect of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, definitely we will uh, approach uh, NDB uh, to consider this possibility. And uh, as for other <coughs> deeds by uh, BRICS um, on the field of COVID-19 pandemic response. I should mention the initiative of the Russian Federation to create a, an integrated system to respond uh, the um, mass uh, to, to the uh, infectious diseases um, in BRICS countries, so which actually one of them is COVID-19. So we proposed this uh, initiative, it is on the table, and uh, uh, definitely um, uh, we're looking forward for the positive response of our uh, partners. Actually, um, uh, it is the case already, because uh, uh, this integrated system was uh, uh, mentioned uh, in the declaration um, uh, by our leaders, uh, um, at the summit, and uh, this is uh, the work that should be done by BRICS. Uh, definitely, it's uh, not, uh, maybe uh, not uh, to respond immediately, because this initiative should be finalized first, but uh, this is to um, stop the spread, potential spread of other um, mass diseases uh, that uh, could happen in, uh, in future. Uh, so, but um, uh, coming back to the strategy for economic uh, partnership, BRICS economic partnership adopted uh, at the uh, BRICS summit um, uh, in 2020. Uh, so, uh, the emphasis of this uh, uh, strategy definitely also uh, was uh, uh, made uh, on uh, the economic recovery, on the uh, on ensuring the sustainable development, uh, the sustainable growth, economic growth uh, by our countries collectively. Uh, definitely, uh, BRICS um, is only a tool, so uh, it's not a guarantee that uh, if we pronounce this or that, 
uh, that uh, countries uh, will uh, immediately uh, restore the economic growth because it depends not only BRICS but the national efforts by countries as well as the international situation. So I believe it's, it's evident. So uh, as for BRICS and Quad, uh, Quad is a different format. Uh, we also we always um, position BRICS as a, um, a mechanism of cooperation between the five countries, which uh, who represent uh, the non-Western, so to say, world. So this is a kind of cooperation between growing uh, powers, growing uh, countries, growing economies, um, and uh, definitely. Uh, we don't want to uh, position it as an alternative uh, to uh, any kind of uh, other formats. So this is the case with Quad. Um, being participating, uh, being participating in BRICS doesn't mean that uh, uh, any country can't participate in any other formats. For example, uh, Russia, as you know, uh, participates in uh, RIC, as India and China. Um, Russia also participates in the Eurasian Economic uh, Union, in the Commonwealth of Independent States, and so on and so forth. So it doesn't mean it's a kind of a tool of uh, diplomacy, uh, a tool of uh, international uh, politics, if you want, uh, to promote uh, uh, common interests on the international agenda and definitely to prioritize uh, some uh, issues on the international agenda uh, which we have, on which we have a uh, common approach. So um, as for competition, we are not uh, going to compete uh, with uh, any other formats. BRICS was established as a convenient platform convenient for all the participants uh, to cooperate, to exchange views, to uh, promote some best practices, to uh, develop our economic uh, trade uh, investment uh, ties, uh, to uh, find uh, common ground for uh, <clears throat> translating, so to say, common position to the world. So we don't see any uh, at least yet, we, we don't see any uh, problems with court, and it's the sovereign right of India to participate in uh, this or that uh, format. So how can we, uh, I don't know, uh, instruct India uh, to do or not to do anything? It's a sovereign state as well as the Russian Federation is the sovereign state, and we promote our own um, uh, policy and uh, we also participate in some um, other integration or uh, cooperation formats so I don't think I don't think that uh, there is about competition it's about uh, implementing national interests so uh, what is the most important not to uh, introduce this competition uh, maybe synergy is the best word how we can uh, coexist, cooperate, and so on and so forth. So um, that's why uh, we usually say that BRICS is not uh, about uh, promoting uh, any unilateral agenda. It's about the world. It's about co common um, uh, coexisting in the world. It's about cooperation. It's about the ways how different states can uh, find a common ground for promoting, uh, collectively promoting uh, their interests on the international arena. Uh, so, uh, being uh, the uh, head of the BRICS office in the Russian MFA, uh, definitely I. Uh, don't have enough uh, competences to uh, speak about code because uh, I'm not the guy who dealing directly with this uh, format definitely but um, in my humble opinion uh, it's just one of the formats that can exist in the world <laughs> so it's not something here uh, oh, uh, when we speak about any format, 
as uh, the uh, competition uh, or uh, as the challenge for other uh, formats, I don't think that uh, we uh, could uh, promote a positive agenda in that way. So definitely we should uh, think how uh, we um, can promote the common interests, uh, the common positions, find how we can uh, cooperate together to make this world better. So, as for uh, the Russian interest in Indian priorities, yes, we are very interested in uh, Indian priorities in BRICS and uh, we are uh, working with our partners. Um, we have very um, a strong partnership with India within BRICS or bilaterally and definitely we are looking forward to India to uh, <coughs> continue uh, initiatives launched uh, in the Russian year in BRICS and uh, it's not something outstanding. We are part of, of uh, the BRICS grouping and definitely uh, we want this grouping to uh, develop further. Uh, I believe I have nothing to add here. So, uh, and uh, uh, the second your question was about uh, the Russian role, uh, that how can we uh, transform the Russian role during the Indian presidency? Um, actually, I am um, sorry, um, uh, maybe I'm not so confident, but I didn't understand the question. So, what do you mean by now, seeing the Russian role uh, in BRICS. Russian role in, Br in BRICS is uh, uh, the role of uh, uh, one of the participants of this format and definitely we are looking forward to BRICS to serve as a uh, good platform for cooperation and for promoting Russian national interests. It's, it's, uh, uh, I believe uh, that all the um, uh, members of this format are also have the same uh, vision of, uh, of BRICS. Uh, that's why actually we created BRICS. So we tried to find the common um, points, common uh, vision uh, to uh, promote uh, internationally and uh, internally, I mean uh, the intra-BRICS cooperation. Definitely we are looking forward to um, developing and strengthening the uh, trade and investment ties within BRICS because it's very important. Our uh, BRICS partners are uh, very important partners uh, for the Russian Federation bilaterally or in BRICS. Uh, and in terms of trade, uh, it's, uh, it's a common point that uh, uh, every state wants to develop its trade want to promote uh, its uh, investment opportunities and so on and so forth. So this is the case here. Uh, so this is the role of Russian BRICS. Definitely we are, uh, we are flattering ourselves that uh, um, we are a kind of, uh, with other partners of course, uh, could be considered as an engine for BRICS um, um, after the year, the past year when we um, cheered uh, the grouping and uh, we have launched a lot of initiatives and uh, actually I, uh, my thanks uh, go to um, Mr. Matu uh, from uh, ORF uh, who also um, mentioned high standards set <laughs> by uh, the Russian chair. <laughs> So uh, thank you, and uh, I believe that uh, it's a uh, very uh, excellent mark, so to say, for the Russian chairship uh, in uh, 2020, and we thank our partners that uh, almost everything that uh, we uh, try to promote uh, actually um, uh, uh, found uh, the, uh, its continuation uh, in the further work of BRICS and uh, uh, undoubtedly it couldn't happen uh, without strong support from our BRICS partners because BRICS is not one country, it's five countries and the success of BRICS 
depends on the activities and uh, um, cooperation of five. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for very uh, extensive uh, response. Just uh, one very short uh, addition before I pass it over to Akshay. Uh, with the vaccine, um, I think I've just uh, written a piece for ORF on the vaccine series, and I can tell you that um, I know India is to be at least number two in uh, an, an amount of uh, vaccines produced for the world, and uh, I think at least 700 million, there is an agreement for India to produce on the license and agreement of the Sputnik V vaccine. So this is, I think, a very good example of cooperation between the two countries within BRICS and bilaterally that shows that uh, this is not about um, BRICS being each for themselves, but uh, rather uh, looking into very competitive fields and finding the common ground in there. Uh, Akshay, the floor is yours. Um, uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, to all the questions, um, I have uh, two or three observations that I wanted to share as a, just as an academic following the RICS process, processes for many years. Uh, on the I think, uh, I mean, I, I understand the question of the vaccine diplomacy uh, and coordinated response of the BRICS. I, I think uh, the direct response to COVID recovery would be that, you know, if you notice that all the countries have been involved at the G20 uh, and at the IMF to work on DSSI, the Debt Service Suspension Initiative. And, uh, and it's been fairly successful. I mean, it has had its challenges, but it's successful. Now, I think the idea of participating in an IMF or G20-led initiative is that I think the, the, the objective of BRICS from the very beginning was not to pull out of international, multilateral, at least not the successful multilateral initiatives that are out there. It was always to create uh, an alternative, like a plan B, uh, that would help the BRICS countries in case there is either a strategic or uh, just an unforeseen crisis that may emerge so that we become a little bit more uh, independent uh, and have some alternatives. So if you look at the work that is happening on BRICS payment systems or CRA or NDB, these are all ideas so that we could create, we could work on areas where we could have some resiliency if uh, the international system was not working for us. And so I would uh, not necessarily judge BRICS if the vaccine diplomacy did not work, but I certainly would judge BRICS if our alternate financial, economic, and security systems that we were trying to set up would, uh, would not be in place. And I think that's why we need to do some work there. Look at how Europe created Instex to make payments to Iran so quickly when it was in their interest. So I think, uh, so BRICS was set up, one, to make sure that there's some alternative that we have, and two, I think, personally, I think BRICS has been very smart with the COVID economic recovery-related initiatives in that they're working with other countries and working with the multilaterals where it is working. On the BRICS versus uh, versus Quad, um, I think, uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, it is somewhere, sometimes it is flattering to see the role that in or few perspectives on the role that India is playing on global affairs. But for us, you know, Russia has always been a great power. And, you know, if we look at Russia's uh, uh, involvement in international affairs, how they can work with different forums all at the same time. I remember a time where United States and Russia were working to, together to cut a deal on Iran. But at the same time, United States and Russia were at, at the opposite ends of the table in Ukraine. But there was a way in which, uh, you know, Russia was man was able to manage these great power relations. Was and I think it's it's something that we in India definitely study to see how we can work in different multilateral forums uh, on areas where we have a certain kind of strategic objective. BRICS certainly for us started off as an economic. Uh, 
uh, with an economic objective, which is now introducing a little bit more strategic considerations. Whereas Quad, basis of Quad started off as a strategic consideration, which is now taking on some economic uh, uh, objectives. And so I think the starting point definitely is very different for BRICS and for Quad. And um, I think uh, over time, uh, while the starting points are, are, are different, I think it's the overall strategic picture that defines how India really participates in both of them. On, um, I have one comment on, on Russia's, how seriously Russia will take India's priorities or how seriously India would take Russia's priorities. I think that one reason why you might not, whoever asked the question, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, but one of the reasons why you might not see an obvious answer to whether India is taking on a Russian priority clearly or Russia is taking on an Indian priority clearly is because we have worked really hard, the BRICS has worked really hard to have a homogenous plan. The whole idea is that it should not matter over time that we all are working towards the same objective. So I think the themes that, that each country sets every year in the world that definitely provides some sharpening, some focus and identity for the BRICS for that year. It happens with all multilateral processes. But I think it speaks to continuity that uh, there isn't a, a very quantitative um, assessment of how many priorities India is taking over or how many initiatives Russia is supporting that India is doing. I think it's, it's become so interwoven and integrated that, uh, that every country is supporting. So the BRICS Economic Partnership 2025, uh, the energy cooperation agreement that came up under the Russian presidency. I mean, these are, these, this is not, I mean, it was led by Russia, a lot of credit goes to them, but it belongs to all of BRICS. And uh, all the countries participated in making sure it happens and we need to continue taking on that process this year. So I think it speaks to the, to the success in a way of BRICS that we're able to look at goals which are higher than the individual countries is now and that while we sharpen and work towards certain initiatives, our individual focus areas are not overpowering the overall effort that BRICS are doing. So maybe I'll stop here. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Lord. I, I know we're running out, out of time drastically, but I did promise to give a word to um, our other participants. So if you could be quite short. Uh, there, I, I, uh, I will ask for the closing uh, word for Mr. Shashib Hushan. Uh, but before that, uh, very quick uh, questions or comments from probably Dr. Manash Sharma. And then we have two students who also wanted to uh, jump in really quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panova. And it's a matter of privilege and uh, an honor for all of us uh, to represent Amity University on behalf of our founder president and chancellor. We are sin sincerely grateful to the BRICS committee under your dynamic and able leadership, Dr. Panova, who you are very uh, ably leading the BRICS initiative under the Russian chairmanship, uh, which we are very proud and you deserve all accolades and praise. Uh, the role will be remembered for all times to come and you have led ex by example and has stimulated all of us on and we will try to run on your footsteps which were remarkable innovative and we salute you so uh, very briefly amity with the support of BRICS committee and fifu um, under the russian chairmanship inaugurated amity BRICS center on the auspici auspicious occasion of indian independence day the 15th of august 2020 and since then amity is fully committed and MIT attaches high importance to the BRICS cooperation mechanism. States committed to consolidating BRICS strategic partnership and positive momentum in BRICS solidarity and cooperation together with all BRICS nations, especially together with Russia. MIT stands ready to work together with all the members to strengthen communication and cooperation in various fields, advancing the three pillar driven cooperation in economic, education and cultural sector through multilateral cooperation and expand BRIC plus cooperation and realize solid and sound sustained progress in BRICS cooperation. And to contribute to the international community, resume mutual and sustained growth, and to improve global governance, specifically 
by leveraging four identified areas which Amity thinks are critically important. The first is the cross-fertilization of contemporary research and education, being an uh, education institution. We would like to draw uh, the, the, the solidarity and the cooperation from all the BRICS universities um, in the academic and the research using digital and technological solutions for attaining SDGs. Third, enhancing people to people exchange, uh, share all the excellencies who have uh, mentioned uh, categorically very important. And the fourth and real uh, important uh, for us, for the youth to generate, you know, a livelihood employment is to entrepreneurial innovation cooperation. We are committed for it. And that's it from side. Happy to take questions. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think part of the questions will go to, for tomorrow because we are having a round table which will be devoted to specific issues of uh, BRICS uh, ongoing and prospective cooperation. But now uh, from Sevalet wanted to ask a question Re really briefly. Thank you very much. Sevil Chiris of Harrison Federal University, I international relations student. Uh, my question uh, would be addressed to uh, Mr. Mikhail Nikolaevich Mikov. Um, in your speech, you have mentioned that uh, technology is becoming sort of a link among the BRICS countries, so it's a, a connection, and we're now seeing it indeed uh, at this very session when we have the Indian colleagues connected online. And my question is just about that. So. Uh, are there any other examples um, when technology does connect BRICS? And if so, could you please elaborate a little bit more on that? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Shall we have a response? Yeah. Yes, definitely. You are right because uh, technology innovation uh, is one of the um, mainstreams. <laughs> for BRICS as well. <clears throat> so Brazilian chairship, for example, in 2019 uh, uh, made it um, a priority. Uh, we also uh, continue, uh, continue the, the, to discuss this issue under the uh, the Russian chairship. And uh, actually, uh, we have the STI cooperation very uh, proactive and uh, uh, about uh, 16 working groups uh, are uh, working within BRICS uh, to uh, exchange best practices, um, uh, views, uh, and uh, um, uh, developing a common product uh, in the sphere of uh, STI. Uh, and uh, it goes from uh, photonics to um, world ocean exploration and so on so, and so forth. Um, uh, definitely, you very rightly uh, mentioned that uh, the uh, new technologies uh, made possible uh, the uh, progress um, of uh, the BRICS cooperation in 2020 as against the backdrop of um, uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, limitations, we managed to uh, continue our dialogue and uh, out of uh, um, about uh, 150 uh, meetings um, held uh, in 2020, um, we organized um, a good half um, in a virtual format, or even more. Uh, for example, the meeting of um, uh, ministers of foreign affairs uh, it was organized in a virtual format as well. Definitely, once again, I should know that uh, this format has its own limitations because um, because of the new technologies, definitely we are um, getting closer, but at the same time, not all the issues could be covered because the time uh, frame uh, is uh, not the same as um, while uh, we are meeting uh, in a face-to-face -face, uh, format. Uh, but but uh, it's, uh, it's a good tool uh, to maintain a dialogue um, against the backdrop of uh, 
some limitations uh, that we have uh, sometimes uh, as uh, the last year showed. So this is the case here, right? A lot of um, new technologies, uh, we try to use a lot of new technologies to develop the uh, cooperation in BRICS and at the same time uh, this, uh, we uh, put an accent uh, on uh, developing uh, technologies and innovation, innovations, um, innovation cooperation between our countries. Uh, thank you so much. I adding really briefly uh, over the past years of, of the existence of this STI cooperation, there were over 100 uh, common projects that were approved and funded by the BRICS funds, uh, governmental funds uh, together. And uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Malka Bradley said, uh, they range from uh, photonics to nanomaterials to the world ocean to uh, ICT etc and uh, in fact probably Forest and Federal University would be well placed to be more active in this regard uh, as you know we are the only higher education institution in Russia that has world ocean faculty or school uh, in our walls so we are uh, well placed for this uh, area. Uh, we were the first to launch the uh, School of Digital Economy, so it's also ICT is one of the prospective areas for BRICS. And uh, I think in, uh, we also had in their consortium, national consortium within National Technology Initiative, and uh, NTI is uh, really um, gaining its ground within BRICS, uh, and we're heading the consortium on VR, AR, and uh, neurotechnologies. So this is something where we should be more active, and I turn to you as youth. I know you're an IR uh, student, but uh, you should be talking to your colleagues, to your friends in other schools, uh, the ones that I mentioned, but also beyond, because you're the future. Uh, for our BRICS cooperation and think we should be investing our trust in you guys in order to uh, continue what we're doing now, but probably in uh, better, even in better mode and better vein. Uh, Mr. Shashi uh if I could ask you to offer your like closing remarks to uh, this round table, we hope to see you face to face next time with us. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Panua, for having extended the invitation uh, to listen to the experts today uh, on BRICS and India's chairmanship. And uh, I would also like to congratulate in, uh, Russia on uh, a wonderful inning uh, for the completion of its chairmanship uh, during the past year. And we believe, India believes that the experience of Russia would certainly help us in taking this uh, chairmanship forward in this continuing year of uh, pandemic. Uh, regarding few of the uh, questions that were raised about India and BRICS, I would like to just uh, mention one statement uh, which is given by our leadership, uh, that we believe that BRICS has been a beacon of multilateralism based on equality, mutual respect and trust. And this is highlighted in our uh, team for uh, India's chair, uh, chairmanship as BRICS at 15 India Intra BRICS Cooperation for Continuity, Consolidation and Consensus. So uh, with these words, I would uh, once again like to thank all the participants today and uh, to the organizers of this wonderful uh, plenary session. And I certainly hope to be present in FEFU uh, for the next programs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency, for your wonderful words. Uh, uh, I'm not saying goodbye to you. I'm saying just uh, that we will have a short break till tomorrow. We're meeting again for a round table. Uh, we will be discussing more in-depth uh, areas of uh, BRICS cooperation. And uh, uh, this could be seen. Uh, and I know that we had our Chinese colleagues also present at the round table. In uh, tomorrow, we'll also have more. Uh, I'm sorry for having not enough time for everybody to, who wanted to be able to uh, 
to offer their remarks, to offer their questions to the audience. But, uh, but as I say, we are going to have it a continuation uh, in more details for tomorrow. And uh, this shows great interest that Russia and India both on their uh, academic level, expert level, has in BRICS, and this means that uh, official track is going the right uh, direction because um, I don't think that many, uh, I'm not sure how much Quad that Dr. Lukin have mentioned is having similar support or understanding on the part of its civil society and part of its economic society. I didn't see that much of uh, interaction, Quad interaction, uh, on not on non-official track, but BRICS for, from the very start have been causing great interest and uh, uh, and caused friendship on the part of expert society, academic society, civil youth, parliamentarians, and it's a really intense tissue, and it's been ever uh, developing further from uh, even before the start of official track in 2019. We saw the academic forum first time in 2008, and we had uh, relevant discussions even back in 2006, yet when we only witnessed the first sideline events uh, of the United Nations between the foreign and defense ministers of the BRIC. So um, I think this is a good um, symbol and good uh, sign of uh, the BRICs being closer to the needs of the five countries' people, and thus responding to uh, where our people want the world to develop. Thank you so much for being here with us today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow, and uh, uh, looking forward to your um, participation, your bright questions and bright, bright comments, and. Um, uh, and uh, those from India, I'm looking forward to seeing you not only tomorrow online, but also face-to-face -face this April and further on. Thanks again, and uh, good luck for the rest of your day and for, uh, for this spring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.